Welcome to beautiful New Hampshire and as you can see GTI Spindle Technology corporate headquarters. I'm with my friend Lisa today and we're going to talk a little bit about the history of GTI then go a little bit into the shop tour and even the expansion over the years but first I get to hang out with Lisa to learn a little bit more about the history. She is you can count on one hand one of the first five employees to be here since the start so who better to talk about this company than my friend Lisa. Lisa, thank you so much for being here. Thanks, Tony. Appreciate it. Absolutely. A pleasure to see your smiling face and learn a little bit more about the company. So, Lisa, yep. let's talk about when you started and why you started. So, GTI was actually started in 1997 here in Manchester, New Hampshire. We started the company here with five employees, like you had said before. And the premise of starting the company was not to just provide spindle repair services, because there are a lot of spindle repair companies out there but was to partner with customers to identify why they're having spindles fail, reduce the number of fa failures that they incur, and solve long-term issues that they're having and build long-term partnerships with customers. Isn't that just so important, Lisa? I mean, we stand here today and we know it's important, but to implement and build a structure of a company from 1997 right. till now, what's that growth been like? And did that belief help you grow either quicker or with the stronger relationships that you wanted to build since 1997 to today? Right, so when we originally started here in 97, um, we were here for about five years, just this standalone facility. We only actually occupied one small bay at the end of this building, and gradually we moved into bays, and then we're here now, obviously. But then we started our facility in Bloomington, Illinois. The service we started there was to service Caterpillar, um, and that was the primary objective of that service center. But then as the Caterpillar business grew and we became more brand recognized in the Midwest, we started obviously acquiring additional spindle repair opportunities with other end users. So the primary focus of REN was originally high speed ID grinding spindles there, but then that's grown and that facility in Bloomington is actually a duplicate to this facility, just on a smaller scale. And now that you've grown into these other facilities, do you support all of the U.S. or has it gone broader than that? Are we U.S. focused right now across the entire nation? We are basically North American focused, all the, so U.S. focused. However, we do get a lot of spindles from Mexico and some spindles from Canada. Absolutely a perfect answer. Well, now that you've got everyone excited, i got to go meet up with my buddy Paul and give them a shop tour of this facility in New Hampshire. Excellent. Have fun. Excellent. Well, now, as you can see, I'm inside this amazing facility in New Hampshire with my buddy Paul, and we're going to talk a little bit more about what they do, give you a shop tour, and the expansion of the overall buildings. Paul, looking around, this looks pretty magnificent. What do you have going on here? Tony, we're crazy busy here, man. We're, uh, we're just getting them in left and right. It's, it's wonderful uh, to have such a problem, I guess you would have to say, right? You know, averaging 25 a week or something like that, that's just... It, it, it really puts a, a you know, good, good feeling in our heart, you know, honestly, that we have this much uh, dedication. So. Well, as we walk around and we've been through the front office and we've been through the facility, right here is where the spindles come in for the first time to take a look at. What are the guys doing behind us? That, that's correct. What these guys are doing right behind us right now, they're, they're doing a visual inspection when they first get the spindle in here to make sure that there's not additional damage that might have happened to transport. Then they're going to go over and do a full breakdown on it, go through the spindle anywhere from checking shaft runouts to taper runouts and then also do encoders, whatever, you name it, we're going through it. So, Paul, after it leaves this room, where does it go to next? Uh, so, Tony, after it leaves here, it's going to go into the quoting process. Um, we'll send that to generate that quote, send it over to the customer, and we'll wait for their approval. Um, and after it's gone on from quoting, and let's say that they want to move on with the process, everything works out like they want it to, whether it be lead times or cost or whatever it might be, it then starts to get rebuilt. Is that the next stage of the process? That is the next stage. As soon as they approve, it goes right into the, the ordering of the components that they may need for that particular spindle. Any rework that needs to be done gets sent out, and that starts the whole ball rolling as far as 
the uh, the repair goes. Yeah. So once we knock that out, I know QC is incredibly valuable to you. You guys not do it just once with the, every individual person of the process, but you even have a secondary QC area to make sure that everything that was looked at is now being looked at again. That's the next part, right, That's QC? That's correct. That's correct. And we put full trust in our technicians that they're doing the jobs, and they do a wonderful job at doing that. But they incorporate an extra set of eyes just to go over those extra things, just to make sure that nothing's missing before it goes out the door is very important to us. Well, you wouldn't believe how many times I could use a second pair of eyes to help some of the mistakes I've made, and I trust myself also, you know I what I mean? i got some glasses some here over here for you. <laughs> so now it goes through QC and it's ready to ship out. That's the next step, right? And you do that shipping from here? That's But correct. you have three locations across the country, don't you? We do, and I know Lisa had mentioned that we have this, this is our headquarters here, and of course we got the location out in uh, Illinois, but we also have one down south, down in North Carolina. All the processes are the same. We just, it's, those are just, you know, smaller outlets than this actually our headquarters here, our flagship. So, And walking around this facility, Paul, the one thing we may have left out, which might even be one of the more important things, is the fact that you have a shop that's dedicated to support this entire process in case parts need to be ma made or ground down. Just in case whatever is going on isn't already inventoried, you have a full department that can machine whatever you need. Yeah, we have a shop out back. We have a couple of guys out back there. And their uh, primary focus is just maybe component manufacturing. Maybe we need a flange. Maybe we need a nut. Maybe we need a tool. Uh, so they're at the uh, disposal of our technicians uh, for that pur purpose and served. So. And looking around the shop and talking with your human resources and talking with Tom and Ray and these amazing people here, you guys are always constantly looking for more creative help, right, to go along with your constant expansion of all this inventory I see around us. We actually are, and uh, anytime we get an opportunity to find another great technician that can, we can bring on board, and any other new equipment that we might need just to do testing and, and verify, um, yeah, we're always looking for the future. We don't want to just stand still. So. Well, you heard it here first at MTD with my buddy Paul, with Lisa before that. Come check them out. GTI Spindle Technology, amazing here in New Hampshire. A couple other buildings as well. Thank you all for watching, Paul. Thank you for being Thanks, a brother. part of MTD, my friend.